Okay, hey, welcome back. Now I have a talk. Uh, I'm personally also very interested in this cross plane cluster API. That's really cool. Um, Carlos is going to talk about too many CRDs. I say not enough. Leveraging cross plane cluster API for active, effective platform delivery. So welcome, Carlos, and go on. Thank you very much, Antin. <laughs> Can everybody hear me well? Yep. Okay. Well, welcome everyone to my uh, talk. I am Carlos Mestre del Pino, uh, KCV and L organizer and platform engineering consultant in ITQ. And uh, well, I'm going to present, as Engine said, about uh, cross plane cluster API and how you can make more efficient usage of um, your CRDs. I find very exciting to be here in this such a uh, gaming uh, location um, because, uh, well, people will not know this, but um, my cousin is actually the current uh, European champion of eFootball. That is, uh, well, kind of the rebranded um, Konami uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. Uh, he's also been a um, professional player for Bayern Munich for four years. And as you can see in the image down there, well, he was there in Paris. That was actually his first um, international performance. And, uh, well, he came third. He didn't win. Then again, I also did not get accepted to talk in KubeCon, so I think we're sharing something in, I think we're sharing something in there. And you can also see in the image, he made 150 euro, right? So must be nice. So let's move on now then uh, uh, onto, the, onto the presentation. Um, before, I would like to start setting a little bit of, uh, yeah, what is, what is a platform? We're going to come and put the absolute definition in here, but let's set um, some, uh, some premises. So according to Garner, a, a platform is the self-service interface through which developers can access um, internal developer platform capabilities, so tools, et cetera. Um, it is golden paths to production, and it's text and tools which are glued together in a way which will lower the cognitive load on developers. What does that really mean? Now, again, I'm not going to refine the definition, but let's look a bit at what a platform usually provides. Right. So a platform provides the infrared tools that you need to manage, to manage your customer workloads and the platform itself. Again, the tools, services, and blueprints that your developers need um, to run their applications, as well as governance, policy, and security um, uh, guardrails, such as yeah, RBAC, et cetera. There's, that doesn't come up with uh, any challenges. So there's a growing set of disaggregated platform components, which are running everywhere, anywhere. So that can be on-premises, on-cloud. You might be con uh, consuming directly of uh, yeah, some kind of managed service. Um, and they have to be glued together, and most of the times as well, highly available, both for us as a platform team as for the, uh, for the developers. There's also other sets of challenges, such as organizational challenges, so how, how do we do tenancy? And this is not only multi-tenancy within a Kubernetes cluster, but how are we um, organizing resources um, across, well, let's say, the whole data center and other services which will be consumed by the clusters. There's also operational challenges, such as complicated uh, uh, RBAC models. For example, when you have like a third integrator party, say that the um, security team needs to install a certain component into every cluster. Um, well, when you're in the GitOps model, you're going to run into a bunch of issues. Like, for example, there's, um, of course, you're not really, really giving cluster-wide permissions, but they might need to install um, uh, uh, yeah, cluster, cluster, create cluster roles, cluster role bindings, etc. So you need to work uh, a little bit around that. And of course, there's a cognitive uh, load, so large amount of tools to learn, in this case, yeah, both for you and as well as for um, your developers. So this thought, too many CRDs. Um, I guess uh, most people must, might have heard this before. Um, it comes, I think, a little bit more from um, well, people that's beginning and it's starting to understand, okay, there's all these new objects which I have in my API, as well as potentially with people that's a little bit more hesitant as well, um, still in Kubernetes. But I want to, I, want, I'm, I'm, I was wondering why. why. Why does this happen? Why is it so special about uh, CRDs, right? Um, well, you're, 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 when you're looking at your resources, your core resources, well, you're, you're, they're in fact so, just someone else's abstraction, right? Why, is, why, why are you not thinking differently about a pod, a deployment, a service? What did that ever mean to you before you started learning Kubernetes? Um, so of course, the moment that you're in, uh, installing other, um, yeah, other CRDs into that cluster, well, you're going to have to learn what, what these CRDs do in the, in the application that I've, that I've installed, et cetera. Um, so 
are there too many CRDs? In my opinion, there are not enough. Um, because CRDs uh, will, able, will be able to, they will allow me to manage, um, let's say, my, uh, my, my platform, my application as a cattle, right? Um, let's get on with that. So what do we know about cattle? Well, there's this tale, of course, this whole pets versus cattle concept. First, uh, as well, a little bit on how we're managing servers. Eventually, as well, with uh, um, uh, applications as well, um, workloads running on Kubernetes. Um, so we know that individual members of the herd are replaceable. I must be able to move them from one place to, a, to another, so within the ranch, go into the feeding area, go into the milking area, etc. And I must be able to do this as a group, right? I don't want to take individual members and do this, right? Um, so what did turn your pets into cattle in the past? Um, well, I think there's like three main points, I would say. So that's the infra as code, you know, your provisioning, your, your um, resources in a declarative way with infrastructure as code. You're configuring them um, as well after they have been provisioned. And in the case of applications, there's the, of course, containerization, which essentially was taking all what I need for the application, code, dependencies, et cetera, and packing them as a unit, which I can then deploy. So what is you causing your platform to be treated as a pet? Right? Because we talk about how the, our developers should be building Kubernetes native applications, but sometimes I'm wondering, are we building Kubernetes native platforms? It's this guy. So if you're managing cattle, your platform, it's in fact your shepherd, right? And of course, we all know and love dogs, um, so we look at them as pets, but in reality, for the shepherd, the, the, sh the person, um, they're, all, they're another tool, right? And they also cannot get too attached for them because they're a resource for work. So where's your platform a pet? Can be probably caused by co a lack of portability, which might be caused by a cumbersome bootstrapping process, which itself might include some manual intervention. So I cannot, I cannot create my platform, I cannot create and export my platform onto other um, infrastructures uh, easily. So how can you cattleify uh, your platform? <laughs> let's, start, uh, let's start seeing how we, if we can manage it in a little bit of a different way. Um, so, some of you with Crossplane, well, that's, uh, that's my opinion. Uh, Crossplane is a, a Kubernetes native infrastructure as code um, with which you can manage non-Kubernetes resources as Kubernetes, as Kubernetes CRDs, and you can create CRDs without, uh, without writing um, controllers. It also allows you to expand the scope of what you believe a pla of what you think a platform is, so it does not have to be just within the constraint of the Kubernetes cluster, but of course as well all those uh, um, resources outside. But does that allow you? It allows you to build a platform which is composable, it's modular, and it's versionable. It's composable because, um, uh, well, it's something that I'm going to talk a little bit more about later, which is the cross-plane compositions, which you might, might, all might have heard of um, already. I can bundle a bunch of resources together and treat it as a, as a different resource, right? as, as, the, as, as the abstraction which I've built. It is modular um, uh, because, well, as saying that you're bundling resources, you've already created, you've, you bundle resources, you create a CRD, well, you can, you can create that CRD also as part of another. Um, composition. So that's, you can already get kind of like a hierarchy or like a nesting of your um, resources, which might be, which would be useful in many cases. Um, of course, for using Crossplane, you install the uh, Crossplane providers. And uh, well, we're usually always thinking about the public cloud provider. So a provider GCP, I can create resources in GCP or um, uh, in AWS, etc. cetera. Um, but in here, I want to be, be talking about the provider Kubernetes. So I can create objects in my Kubernetes cluster. So in the same way that you, well, not in the same way, similar to how you would be creating, no, you get Argo CD, you give, him the you give Argo CD the responsibility to create um, your, your resources. So provider Kubernetes, yeah, allows you to create resources in any Kubernetes cluster. It allows me to patch any resource with any field from any other resource. And that's a bit of a mouthful, but I will, uh, I will show a little bit later. And it is very powerful in combination with other crossplane providers. And as well, I'm going to be talking a little bit on cluster API, with which you can define the cluster as a Kubernetes native resource. Um, you can deploy in different infrastructures, and it's not incompatible with crossplane. Yesterday, I don't know if you were in the uh, in the YouTube session here with uh, Victor and Whitney, and we had to make a choice between 
cross-plane and cluster API. So you might not always need to do so. And in my, in my case, in the case of the use case, which we're going to see later, um, I, was the, I was building this, deploying this on-premises, so I don't have that provider GCP, which you might have. But cross, uh, cluster API can do that for me, so I can create cluster API, and a cluster API resource, a Kubernetes resource with the provider Kubernetes. So let's look a little bit into uh, these um, uh, use cases. So how are we currently provisioning um, clusters? So most of the times you're going to, well, first you're going to be creating this cluster. Um, after that, there's going to be some kind of um, configuration of the cluster of other services which the cluster is going to consume. And uh, at the end, you know, you can deploy certain managed resources in the cluster or your um, uh, your customers, your consumers of the cluster can start deploying into there. But it is a lot of tools that you need for this, for, for building and maintaining pipelines, right? So I need to have a pipeline engine in which I'm going to run something like Terraform um, or other, yeah. Uh, so I will have multiple state files, which I'm going to have to store into an S3 bucket. And well, if I'm also deploying that myself, for example, in the data center, I also going to have to have a backup solution. Um, so it's a lot of tools just to get the one uh, or the, the, the few pipelines um, uh, running, right? So there's also certain failures, right? So sometimes you might have a, a network failure, which just caused um, your pipeline to fail, um, or there's race conditions as well, which you need to take into account. And as well, something fails, you're going to have to do the resource uh, uh, cleanup. So these extra things that you need to add, it's, just, it's not just the pipeline, it's not just this process you want, right? There's so much more. Uh, things that you need to handle in that sense. Um, but what, what if I told you that there is another way? Um, and it's all about abstracting uh, your control plane, your tenants, your clusters, even your applications. You, know, you can create definitions you know, of what you believe an application is, what you believe a cluster, a tenant is. That's with the cross-plane um, compositions. So in my example, I created a bunch of compositions, which we're going to look at soon. And uh, I have a control plane, which can have one or two, well, multiple tenants. Each tenant can have a bunch of different clusters within, and uh, um, it, that can have applications within. Tenants, in this, in this context, you could look at it kind of like the, the you know, a different department, a different uh, team. You know, it depends. Some, it will make sense in your, in, your, in your head according to, well, depending on your um, uh, organization. But yeah, you, would, you, you potentially might have teams which have like multiple Kubernetes clusters. And if it's a de de certain department, they may need to consume certain resources, or the services have to be configured in a different way for depending on different uh, departments, et cetera. So let's look a little bit at how, uh, what, yeah, what this looks like. So I start with, let's say I have my two, two external providers, such as Vault, um, cluster, and counting cluster API as an external provider, just because of um, how my Kubernetes distribution is working. Let's say within my hypervisor, I have a cluster which has a cluster API instance, and I just consume from there. So I'm treating it as an external provider in the same way that you would have like a GCP there, also for the purposes of this um, presentation. So I actually start with Argo CD, because of course, I have all my configuration. I have everything in Git. Um, so Argo CD, I will install Crossplane. And I will install. Uh, I will start installing different cross-plane providers, uh, so such as the Kubernetes one or Helm, so that I can install Helm applications um, in my cluster. After that, we give the responsibility to cross-plane. So, cross-plane can start creating then uh, other components which are part of my control plane, um, such as Keycloak to provide authentication services, have external secrets to yeah pull secrets from um, from Vault or any other backend, and I have Como plane. Um, which we will hopefully see later if there's time. And that is, uh, that's a project from uh, Commodore. So shout out to them for making a nice UI um, to look at, uh, uh, yeah, at the state of all your compositions um, in your clusters. After that, well, we still need some providers for this, uh, uh, um, for, for Vault. And I'm also going to be doing some provisioning on the Keycloak instance, which it's uh, self-managed in this case. Of course, Keycloak could be outside as an external provider, if it's managed by a different team. Um, so uh, the, the point is that in here, uh, you can adapt your platform the way you, wa the, the way you want, or the, the way that, the, depending on the architecture, let's say, that you have in, in, uh, at your customer. So sometimes you need to deploy and manage things yourself. Sometimes you're going to consume them from outside. So 
After that, I have the, created the composition of what, a, what, a, what I believe a tenant is. And a tenant, in this case, it's uh, doing some configuration in the backend. So how am I consuming um, resources from the data center, um, as well as just creating one vault namespace, one key cloak realm, which then my differ the different uh, clusters from, uh, uh, from my um, tenant can consume, so the, the, the different department, right? Well, sometimes it might, maybe it makes more sense to you, depending on your setup, okay, I want a realm per cluster, or I want it, uh, um, yeah, like outside in like a tenant. Um, so it's up to you. You have the flexibility to build um, your setup in that way. And then what I'm providing in, uh, in, the, in the cluster as well, I'm providing cross-plane as well, so that I can install certain um, compositions in it. If you define what your application is, um, then uh, you can create it directly from the uh, customer cluster instead of from the one parent control plane. And in there as well, I'm installing a bunch of CRDs, Nginx, Ingress, uh, um, you know, I have external secrets, DNS, etc. How am I doing the cluster um, provisioning? Um, well, like I said, I have an external instance um, of cluster API and actually have my management, my management cluster, which, which is where I have cross-plane running. I have external secrets operator running. So in essentially, cross-plane, it's um, targeting the cluster API instance, create a cluster, retrieve the cube config, and once all of that's configured, then it can create uh, resources um, into the cluster. Again, this is very specific for my setup. You're probably going to be doing it a different way, like potentially having cluster API just in your main management cluster. Um, so how do we define a, define a tenant, right? Um, so uh, in this case, uh, I'm just doing very, very simple. Uh, also for the purpose of this, I just, you know, saying what storage policy I should use and what, uh, let's say, namespa uh, namespace in my uh, uh, hypervisor, you know, I'm going to be using. Um, so that's as well, so the namespace is as well constraining resources, resource utilization in the back end. And how am I creating a cluster? Well. Uh, I, as well, I have a, well, DT cluster in here. It's not, uh, well, just cluster because that's already a cluster API object, right? So I don't want to have resources called the same. It's called DT cluster. It's my API, deepthought.magrathia.lab. I'm a massive hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy fan, and I'm missing the talk at the other <laughs> in the other room. Um, so that was funny. And uh, yeah, so in my cluster, I, I uh, specify in, under which tenant I want it. And uh, I can specify as well size of VMs and how many replicas do I want for that cluster. You can expose as many variables as you want to, to, the, to, the, to the consumers, to the person that's going to create these clusters, right? So we can now place clusters under our tenants. And this is really done through like a patching kind of strategy um, in, in CrossPlane. You're not doing this very smart um, name, uh, name convention across all your different Helm charts you know, or something so that you get things working. But you can really relate new, your new uh, CRDs you know, to uh, each other. But it does not really stop there. Um, I'm here talking about tenancy. I'm talking about like, uh, provisioning of clusters, etc. But you might have so many different use cases for which you want to create your own your own CRD, you bundle a bunch of resources like you would on a Helm chart, for example, and then let Crossplane um, create that. So how do you design such a platform? Um, you need to define the abstractions based on organizational and developer needs. So you need to constantly uh, speak with your developers um, and with your, well, with your architects, with everyone, of course, to gather what, what does your organization really need? Because at the end, your platform your developers w should want to use your platform, right? They should not be enforced, and they're only going to want to use it if you're providing the services and capabilities that they want, not the ones that you want to enforce as a platform team. Of course, you're going to need to do something, some, some of that uh, with, the, with the security guardrails, et cetera. Um, but to me, that's not the main focus of the platform. So you need to listen to the developer's pain points and try to figure out how you can help them. And my recommendation would be to self service those abstractions as uh, cross-plane compositions. So what about the platform interface? Um, so you already have an API, which is a Kubernetes API, and a database, which is uh, your ETCD. So you can do your uh, create, read, update, delete um, operations on it. 
Uh, you don't need to create all of this externally. You already have a Kubernetes client libraries and can easily extend them for your new CRDs um, with like some kind of like code generation tool. So it's a really minimal effort in coding here. And of course, once you have this, well, you can just build a minimal wrapper around this if you don't want um, your developers to directly target the, um, uh, the Kubernetes API. So actually, I'm going to go into the demo now. So I have this uh, running um, on my lab. Let's see. Can, oh, can everybody see? I don't know. Oh, that might be too small, right? OK. So uh, let me, yeah. OK. So let's look at uh, um, yeah my first composition. So this uh, DT uh, cluster. Let's see what 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 do I have in a, uh, in the DT cluster? What do I com um, consider? So as I said, this is this is this kind of this is what's running on my lab at the moment. Um, so it's not uh, one to one, uh, but I have most uh, mostly everything um, running in here. Um, so I have uh, I have a project cluster, a cluster cube config, which I said I'm going to import after that. And apart from that, I'm going to have provider, com uh, provider configs for Kubernetes, for Helm. So that is configuring my targets, right? So it's like utilizing that cluster cube config um, so that I can after create Kubernetes or Helm resources in, in, uh, in that cluster. Um, I have a management namespace. I have a config map. I have some like uh, initial client, you know, and you can see I'm also installing uh, Ingress and GNX and Crossplane, you know, in this. Um, in this case. And I want to look a bit at um, what I mentioned before that's not about this naming convention, but the patching strategy, right? So uh, let's make this even a bit bigger. So let's say that uh, this, well, this is your definition of your cross-plane composition, which, as you said, you just have an array of different resources. And that can be directly. Um, if it's any other CRD, so let's say you're creating an Argo CD application, you can create that directly. Um, if you're creating a Kubernetes resource, like from the core, um, then you need to use this uh, provider Kubernetes to create a wrapper around it. So this is this uh, kind object. And in an object, I'm going to place, um, well, what you are usually uh, used to, which is then I have here my cluster API, cluster and then I'm specifying, uh, um, yeah, CIDR blocks like a cluster class, etc., um, sizing of uh, of the of the VMs and all of that. So you have these patches, which uh, um, let me go back, perhaps. Oh, spoiler alert. Um, Oh, that might be a bit complicated to show like this. Um, so you have this, you have these patches. So I can take from the uh, definition of what I said a cluster is. So let's get let's get the example. This mostly, as I said, it's not exactly um, uh, that. So I'm missing in here the the the, the size of the nodes, etc. Um, but you can pass, let's say, the values here for the tenant, right? So how am I doing this patching? Um, on the patching which you can do on the, um, what do you call, on the provider Kubernetes, as I said, I can patch anything from any Kubernetes resource. I don't need to have a config map to retrieve a value from somewhere. So I can get it directly from the definition of another resource. So that's how I made the link between my tenants and my clusters. So you can see that I have these patches from. I am going to patch um, all of this definition of a cluster from the definition of for, from a kind tenant. I want to get you know like a storage policy, or I want to get a tenant a tenant name, uh, um, etc. And uh, you can see in here. Oh, I don't have a name. How does that happen? I want to I want to be pat I want to be patched from a tenant. But I haven't specified the tenant yet. I specify the tenant here on the definition of my uh, DT cluster. So you're essentially patching the patch, um, so as to say. 
And now let me show uh, uh, a little bit uh, Como plane. Oh, sorry. Perhaps also interesting to show. So, sorry, or see how it is. Yeah, these are the objects from the from the Kubernetes um, for, from the provider Kubernetes. Um, you're getting some information. So, what are you actually creating? Your kind API version. What's the uh, you know like meta namespace? Where is it going to be deployed in the in the yeah in the other cluster as well as the provider? So, I have here. I have like a bunch of local objects which are part of my control plane. Um, and then, uh, uh, as well, I have resources, which you can see here, provider Kubernetes dev 01. So for the newly created cluster, I have a newly created provider Kubernetes. And just by creating the one clus DT cluster object, I'm creating the cluster, and I'm bootstrapping it um, with Crossplane. Um, and as well, well, you can see your other, you can see your, uh, you know, your Helm releases, which you have deployed. Um, I was talking about like Keycloak realms as well, so I have one here per tenant um, as well. And now let's look a little bit at Como Plane. Again, really uh, amazing um, uh, interface I found. So you can see you can ha you have in here like your your composition. So my control plane, my tenant, my DT cluster. So you, know, you can look at the YAML as I've just so showed you now. Um, but then yeah, you can see uh, uh, you can see your claims. So what what instances have I created of those compositions, right? So I have my control plane. Let's hope it loads. Again, I'm running this on my lab, and I'm just like port forwarding, so connection might be a little bit uh, uh, flimsy. It's not a real data center. Um, so let's see in here. Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, that looks better. So what is my control plane? Um, you can see I have uh, you know, deployments for cert manager. Again, I didn't not want to include everything on the previous picture, not to clutter it, but I have cert manager, have external DNS um, running. You know, I have secret stores, ingress, key cloak. Um, so just about, uh, yeah, just about uh, everything which I need to manage my platform. And then after that, um, I don't have a vault running in my lab. So in this case, the definition of the tenant is just the key, this is just the key cloak realm, as well as the constraints, which is on a place in the cluster when the cluster gets created and it's referencing this um, uh, this tenant. And then we can look as well at uh, um, at what do we have what do we have in this cluster, right? So we have the cluster cube config, we have this provider configs, you know, and anything that you uh, end up creating over there. It's very handy because you can as well. Um, look at uh, yeah, just, just your statuses, any events um, which are happening, and of course, again, look at the uh, objects which have uh, which have been created. Um, so again, well, this is a view of just every individual resource which you're managing um, with Crossplane, and uh, um, you can as well, of course, see well all the different providers that you have uh, that you have configured, and if there's any kind of um, issue going on with that. Getting back. So, takeaways. What did I learn? What was I left thinking after doing all of this? More CRDs are actually better in this case because Crossplane becomes more powerful. The moment I start defi I can de that I'm defining my platform not in the constraint of my Kubernetes clusters, but Outside that makes it that makes it extremely powerful. And as I said, with the uh, provider Kubernetes, I really recommend. Um, there's a, I have a single way of defining blueprints for infrastructure and services in a composable way. I am reducing the amount of tools because I don't have to do this cumbersome pipelines um, anymore. I have one control plane to rule them all and rule them all. That can be there's. I'm not gonna, you're not going to go deep on that, almost a finishing, but there's a, you can have a control plane of control plane situation. Um, so there's that. And not mentioned before, but you, can plan your, you should be planning your data model accordingly. And what I mean with this is you're, feeding, you're, getting inform, you're getting data for your cluster from your tenant definition, and the more resources you have and are you're retrieving values from another resource, the more a kind of spaghetti bowl situation you can get. So you need to be very clear about what is feeding into where. 
that was it for me. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. And I would like to hear if you have any questions. So. Do we have any questions? I see questions. I come. Thank you for the presentation. I was just wondering, let's say you have a hundred clusters to create, like how many series are you going to get in inside your, your main cluster? Sorry, I cannot hear. Can you repeat a bit louder? I, if you create a hundred clusters, a hundred tenants and a hundred clusters, how many CRDs are you going to have in your control plane cluster? Well, I mean, so it's still just the same CRD, right? So you have defined what the tenant is once. You have defined what the cluster is once. But then you're going to have, you, said you have a hundred, then you have a hundred instances of that CRD. You have a hundred claims of your cross-plane composition. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's perfect. So I have another question. Uh, basically, we saw the cross-plane definitions, but what about the copy concept called cluster classes? You already used this, but they also have patches you can apply, and you have all the possibilities to change by, well, the definition uh, depending on your tenant. Cluster class, yeah, yeah, exactly. So in this case, this is still like a very um, simple kind of, uh, well, demo in that sense. Um, so I am only creating, uh, you saw that I was creating a cluster and I was defining a cluster, uh, just mentioning the cluster class, right? Well, you can create your own cluster class, which again, you might do you want a cluster class per cluster? Do you want a cluster class per tenant? Do you want a cluster class per other construct, you know, which you might make? You can, you know, so you, you know you can define exactly what you want in that sense. Okay, yeah. Just interested in comparison how it works. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, just interested how in comparison it works with cross-plane and how much you can scale those approaches. Because I I felt personally that cluster classes are pretty much enough yeah. in many scenarios. So I don't have yeah. So I don't have that much uh, yeah experience like I said with defining the cluster classes with it. Uh, probably yeah something to look into. Mm. Okay, any more question other than that? Um, There's one. Whoa, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to. <laughs> uh, how do you document all of the CRDs that you have available for the developers? So before creating a new CRD, I mean new composition, mm -hmm. um, how do I define, how, do I s how can I see which compositions are there? Uh, otherwise, I can just you know create my own compositions that are very similar to my neighbor's compositions and so on. Hmm. You mean your own platform composition? Sorry, can yeah, you? Yeah, I mean um, I'm making a platform available for people to create compositions on top of. Yeah. Right? Um, how do I make sure that the people that are creating the compositions they know about the other available compositions so that they don't repeat the work that has been done by other people? Well, how are you? How are you doing your documentation? How, you, yeah, how are you usually doing your documentation? Uh, if there's if there's an API to how you can do your documentation, you can also add the definitions within you know your crossplane. You have a provider for your you know documentation provider. You know you can you can automate all of this as much as you would want, right? Yeah, I mean, how have you seen that done? I mean, for Kubernetes, I can just point people to Kubernetes documentation, and there is the CRDs there. Hmm. Um, how have you done? Well, I mean, you need to, uh, of course, uh, you need to show the developers what what they are creating, and you might not need to show to them like what is exactly being created in the background, right? You know, but yes, of course, they're gonna need to they're gonna need to understand um, how, uh, yeah, what 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 this means for them, right, what this means in the context. So for example, for an application, right, you can constrain an application, let's say, uh, the, with the example of Keycloak, let's say that per, you know, per, for, per definition of application, I create even a, a client, right? So I'm automatically providing kind of authentication services for, um, uh, for, the you know, for the cluster. And, you know, just feed me an image, right? But you can also bring that further. And if you're doing like, uh, if you're building the images automatically with something like build packs, you know, et cetera. So that's, that's different, right? Now I just need you to give me the code, right? So I'm, I'm not sure in the way of how you want, how you think, or what you asked, you know, in terms of like how I keep, you know, with like updating this. Um, but uh, yeah, of course, it has to become very clear to, to your developers what kind of objects can they instantiate. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.